Thank you very much. And Dobrdan. And a very good morning to all of you. Dobrdan. Um, I, I have an initial Slovenian name, but un unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't speak Slovenian. Um, so this will be in English. And I want to introduce my assistant Modesta. She will uh, assist me with the presentation. Uh, yeah, it's a great pleasure for me to give this uh, lecture and uh, I hope uh, I can meet your interests and um, also your questions. Um, to give you a short overview, I will start with a short uh, like historical overview of how the the development of the Disability Service Center at the University of Graz started and uh, where we stand now. And then a bit about our principles in work and um, also how legislation affects our work. Then uh, I will describe what we are doing, how we are doing it and I will tell a bit about our students and uh, at the end I will show you three examples um, about students who contacted us and uh, what their, their challenges were and how, how we and I invite you to write any questions you have in the chat also during my speech and um, I will get the information. I'm myself blind, so I use a screen reader and the screen reader doesn't always transfer text in the chat, but um, our moderator will uh, give me the information. But you are also very welcome to just open your microphone and speak to me directly. Yeah, for the start, I want to ask you a short question. Um, we start with a, a small poll and the question would be uh, if you uh, would is, uh, do you already have experience with students with disabilities in your courses, in your class, in any kind of your work? The answers are coming and at the moment we have 60 percent at the moment 50 50. OK. 53 percent yes, 46 no. Mm -hmm. Again 50 50. Yes, I think this is oh, no, uh, 46 uh, percent yes, 53 no. OK, thank you very much. Uh, so I have a, um, a image um, how maybe uh, or what would be interesting for you and again if there are any questions uh, please don't hesitate to uh, write or ask mm -hmm. me directly. The, the latest uh, answers are 47% yes and 52% no and we have eight uh, answers for yes and uh, and now we have 10 answers no meaning 44% yes and 55% no. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> so, um, yes, uh, I will start to uh, with telling you how our center developed and we started in 1994. Before that there were always students with disabilities in uh, Austrian universities but only a few of them and they all, all, all had to um, fight for their for themselves. They had to uh, work out individually their possibilities, uh, talk with the professors and so on. And students were also a vital part of the independent living movement in Austria in the 80s and 90s. And um, they, there came the, the wish uh, that 
at, at every university, there should be a person who would organize things for students with disabilities. Um, and so that they don't, they can't focus on their studies um, and uh, not always take so much time and energy for their needs because of their disability. So there was a meeting with the Minister of Science in 1993, uh, where a group of students asked for a consultant at every university in Austria. And at the beginning, there were only five at the five largest universities. <clears throat> so, um, yes, I started as a kind of a one woman show, so to say. And the most important topics at the beginning was accessibility of university buildings. Our uni university is um, more around 400 and two, uh, around 230 years old. The buildings are, uh, most of them are that old. So, or were at that time. Um, and so they, most of them were not accessible at all for wheelchair users. And <clears throat> so this was the first big task to uh, achieve more accessibility, uh, renovation work to achieve more accessibilities. And at that time, there was also a lot of um, building new uh, buildings for the university, so it was important to be involved there to uh, make sure that at least the new buildings are fully accessible, have accessible restrooms and <clears throat> also full access to all lecture rooms and seminar rooms. Um, and for the further de development credit goes also to our students because their questions and challenges uh, made us develop new ideas and the services we currently provide. So um, we learned by doing, we learned from our students and the more students connected us, uh, contact contacted us, um, the more uh, we saw the need to be sometimes creative, to really do individual um, solutions for individual problems. When I started 28 years ago, um, okay, one, one more thing, we are eight persons now working at the Disability Service Center. We have a picture here with only six of us, I think, because um, two of them just started in November, so we don't have a new group picture of our office. Uh, so this is our almost all persons uh, who work, but we all work part time, so there's no nobody working full time. Yeah. When I started, my idea was that um, after maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, service like ours should not be necessary anymore because inclusion would be complete for the whole university and uh, students with disabilities would not need uh, specialized consultation or services. Now, Today we're not quite there, and I don't think that uh, that dream will uh, come true in the next time, because uh, persons with disability are still a marginalized group in society and also in education. And there are also so many changes through the last 28 years, um, and uh, always new challenges like through the pandemic when uh, we had online teaching, then there was um, a lot to do about access to online online teaching for like students with visual impairments, with blind, blindness. So um, yes, 
there are a lot of achievements uh, since the time I started, but there is still a lot to do. And also the number of students that um, contact us is growing uh, on an, and now on a level about around 100 per year. So let me talk a little bit about our principles. Our principle is inclusion and equal possibilities. Um, I will talk uh, um, shortly about the difference between inclusion and integration. Um, because the concept of integration uh, is to bring the excluded into the major group and it is, but it is based on the so-called individual model of disability. That means that the disabled person alone is responsible uh, for uh, their well-being and uh, training and also is um, expected to assimilate at least to a certain point to the major system. Um, or the majority, the um, system of the majority, and also the environment. And for this reason, some persons with disability uh, would be declared as not integrable. Um, and integration in schools started in Austria in. Uh, officially in 1993. So uh, there, from that year on, parents have the right to, uh, for integration in regular schools uh, for their children with, with disability. Um, but there is also parallel a system of special schools. And this, the problems with this system is that uh, there's always a kind of contest between those two systems. And um, so still a lot of children are in special schools and these don't provide the education that uh, gives them the possibility to go to university. So full inclusion as we see it, um, would be a change of focus. Uh, it is a human right and it means that um, different uh, persons with different needs and different potential are a natural part and a creative part of society. And um, and inclusion is the the right to equal opportunities in all kinds uh, in all parts of society and of course in education. And the change of focus is that not the person with disability is responsible to integrate themselves, but the society is re responsible to provide circumstances that make inclusion possible, that make um, it possible to be part in all areas of society. And yes, st students have different needs and uh, different challenges. But uh, the goal would to be max maximize the participation. Of course, it is a proce process. It uh, needs different action and it's always depending on the level of education in the system or at, uh, on the level uh, of integration that the person already has and also, of course, of the dif different disability. And, but what is important is that it individual possibilities or challenges of persons with disabilities are seen as a resource, as something everyone uh, can profit from by in different ways, by um, 
finding creative solutions, by um, having new ideas, and it should not be seen as a problem that needs to be fixed. Well, um, and therefore, there's also the, the so, <laughs> sorry, I'm fighting for words at the moment, but they will come. Uh, the definition of the um, Convention of Rights of People with Disabilities of the United Nations meets this idea very well, because the definition of disability there is uh, to recognize that uh, disability is an evoluting co concept and it's always a kind of um, communi communication between the um, physical or mental or um, um, health situation of a person and the environment. So um, barriers in attitude and in, in environment create disability as well as the uh, physical situation of the person. So that, uh, that's basically the meaning of this uh, definition and this is also uh, how we see it and how we try to uh, base our work on this. And um, through the years, I've learned that it's important to have um, a lot of information for uh, like university staff um, to uh, provide uh, good services, to give a good information to the, to the students, but there are points where you need the help of law. You can't always count on the willingness of uh, persons to cooperate. You cannot always count on the attitude and the understanding uh, how this would be necessary. In the first years of my work at the university, I often heard the questions, why do we need that? I have never seen a person with disability here. And the answer would be, of course, you couldn't have seen a person with disability here because she can't come into this building because there are only stairs. Or you, of course, you couldn't uh, have a blind person in your course because um, there are no possibilities for this person to get access to all the books are needed. So, um, and in some situations you need a backup by law, so to say, and the legislation uh, concerning inclusion of persons with disabilities at the university helped us quite a lot uh, to develop, not, not only develop services, but also to um, get the knowledge through to almost everyone at the university that this is not a kind of charity, but it is a human right. So um, there is the Universitätsgesetz or University Act from 2002 that made a, uh, a big change. Uh, there is, first of all, some general goals, and one of them is to uh, take the needs of persons with disability in consideration in every action. Then uh, very important is accommodations and modifications for exams and also for curricula. So you can have um, uh, accommodation for exams uh, when the regular form uh, or um, would be um, not, not the same um, access as the other students because of a disability, but it's, it is also possible to have changes in a curricula. Um, if like a person with a disability is not able to attend a special course because of their dis disability, then they can uh, exchange it for another course. Um, for instance, uh, there is a student, uh, she's deaf and she's uh, 
uh, studying to become a teacher, um, a teacher for inclusion and also for German language, because she says that the German language is um, a big challenge for, pupil, who, for, for deaf pupils who grow up with uh, sign language or even more a challenge for uh, children who have to grow up with uh, lip reading. So she wants to uh, qualify also for that for teaching in German. And one course in uh, teaching German is speech and um, uh, and so and, and the students have to do speeches, but also have to they have to listen to uh, how uh, another person pronounces and um, and how uh, another person um, mod modulates their talk and then um, do it uh, do it uh, the, uh, themselves. So the student can't hear, so she can't do this, these exercises. And uh, so we changed uh, her curricula and instead she did uh, an intensive course in uh, German grammatics, um, which would be also very helpful for her work in the future because this is one of the um, big challenges for uh, deaf and hearing impaired children. And so she could uh, go further with her studies. And um, in, also in the, in the um, uh, University Act, there is the, um, the saying that curricula have to take the, um, the CRPD in consideration. Uh, that's not very, clearly defined. So we, until today, we don't really know what that would mean, uh, but it is there and maybe someday we can make some use of it. Um, another important uh, act is the Behindertengleichstellungsgesetz, the Austrian Disability Equality Act from 2006, because there it Discrimination is defined in direct and indirect discrimination. Um, and this indirect discrimination would be if the environment or circumstances uh, exclude persons with disabilities and direct discrimination would be uh, to directly exclude a person with disabilities or um, make uh, aggressive actions against them and uh, things like that. And um, the, the Act also defines um, accessibility of buildings, of public transport, of information system, and persons with disability who feel that they are discriminated can uh, apply for a consultation with the discriminator and um, then also for mediation and only if this both doesn't work then they can bring their uh, their accused to court so it's a bit complicated but it changed quite a lot especially in Austria uh, concerning accessibility of buildings because also part of this act was that uh, 10 years after it started, like in uh, 2016, all public, all public buildings have to be accessible. So I don't need to discuss about um, accessible restrooms anymore, about um, ramps, ramps uh, instead of uh, stairs and things like that when we have an uh, um, building works or renovation works at the university, I now discuss about um, systems uh, for um, hearing impaired people, microphone systems, about um, systems for orientation for visual impaired people. Um, and even those are uh, 
done most of the time regularly. So it made a really big change. Yeah, and then of course there's the con convention of the rights for persons with disabilities that also persons with dis disability have to have equal opportunities in all parts of education, um, in lifelong learning, um, and also in vocational training, so that all kinds of education, all kinds of um, uh, work fields um, will be open to them. And Austria, the Austrian Parliament accepted the convention in uh, 28, uh, 2008. And well, actually we're, we're still working or uh, there are still a lot of things that are not achieved. And uh, Austria has the consultation with the Committee of the United Nations now in 2023, the second one, the first one we had in 2013. So it's a kind of control how the country is achieving the goals of the convention. And there is quite a lot that uh, will be criticized, we already know, um, because um, the government is or uh, in, in some parts like inclusion in schools, um, the, this, the parallel system of um, special schools and integration is much criticized. And also in personal assistance, uh, there are a lot of things that doesn't do, do not work so that uh, people with disability really have equal opportuni opportunities and full inclusion in society. But as, as I said, inclusion is always work in progress, so I hope there will be a lot of work in the future. Um, now I come back to our Disability Service Center, uh, but before I want to uh, ask, are there any questions to that point or any remarks you want to make? Uh, at the moment, uh, there are no questions in the chat. OK, so then I will talk about our goals uh, and how we try uh, and how we uh, work to achieve them. So our goal is, of course, equal, equal access to the whole uh, range of courses and services at the university for students with disabilities, with um, chronic health problems, and also with mental health problems. And that means accessibility uh, should be like common ground, common sense uh, for in all parts uh, and uh, at, of the university, so in um, all parts of staff, but also with fellow in fellow students and equal access should be not something special, but something um, yeah, common and normal. And um, our activities for that is, of course, a lot of information for students. It's very often before they start at the university in their last year of school uh, to plan to uh, go to the university. Um, so there is like about how, in, in a way, how does university function in uh, comparing to school, uh, but also accessibility of university buildings and also housing. So if the student doesn't live in Graz uh, and they come from another part of Styria or of Austria, uh, they need um, student housing and also the question there is uh, which of the student homes are um, wheelchair accessible, uh, about tra public transport um, and also for like uh, students with uh, blindness or vision impairments, uh, training for mobility and orientation at the university and, the, um, and some areas in the, in the city. Um, and then there are um, also for a lot of uh, studies at uh, University of Graz, uh, stu um, students or future students have to go through an assessment 
like for psychology, uh, for pharmacy, for um, translation. Uh, so about, I think, eight or, mo or more studies uh, you have to do an assessment um, to get accepted. And those, there is also the possibility of accommodations in for the assessment. So this is also an, an important topic before studying starts. And then uh, when it starts, of course, again, accessibility, but it, it is a topic um, how to get your um, study material in an accessible form, exams, of course, and also assist, assistive technology. So how does like the screen reader that a blind student use, uses work with Moodle or other uh, platforms, uh, exam platforms. And uh, through, during the last two years, of course, uh, conference um, programs and platforms um, and the work with screen readers were uh, a big topic. And also um, information for teachers and staff is very important uh, about the possibilities, about the rights of students with disabilities, but also how they can in their lecture, lectures, in their courses, be inclusive, uh, like inclusive teaching, accessibility of uh, material they provide. Um, yes, of course, um, exams is also there a topic. And well, a lot of other questions. We also provide um, courses together with another area at the university in uh, digital teaching and accessible digital teaching um, for um, teachers um, and there and I see that there's really growing interest in these topics so especially the younger generation of uh, teachers and scientists at the universe, university um, have are very much interested in uh, diversity issues and uh, also in inclusion of persons with disabilities. So um, then I will switch to uh, concretely to our services um, that we provide for students. Um, there uh, one is um, transformation of study material into accessible digital forms. Um, if you have, a, if there is a book, uh, then it will be scanned and then it uh, will be, um, then there will be some work done to make it really accessible with like a screen reader or also people with dyslexia use that uh, because they, for them, it's sometimes easier to read through text if they also uh, can have it um, read to them by, by computer speech. Then, of course, there's a lot of digital documents uh, already used. Uh, Again, the pandemic made a big change, uh, much more digital, docu digital documents uh, instead of handouts on paper, uh, but not all of them are accessible. So there uh, is some transformation needed. And we have an example here uh, and on the presentation of um, statistics for a blind student of psychology. Um, so the usual way uh, mathematics and statistics is uh, uh, shown is not accessible for screen reader. So the blind students work with uh, a system called LATTECH um, that makes it possible to um, have all information, all mathematical information in one line and uh, and uses um, 
figures uh, that are uh, convertible for the screen reader. So we also transfer uh, mathematical material and uh, things like that. We also have a blind student in mathematics now in this uh, form, in, in the LaTeX form. And it's a uh, and the good thing about it is they do an exam in LaTeX. It's very easy to transfer it back into the regular form, so the uh, teachers uh, don't have to use the LaTeX. But in in mathematics, they uh, it's so so to say one of their basic languages, so it's not a problem there. Uh, but in in psychology and uh, uh, statistics, they don't usually usually work with LaTeX. In in regular texts, uh, there is uh, it's often necessary to um, specially uh, describe pictures and graphics if they are important, and also uh, make some um, additional information that makes it easier for the blind student to find special pages to uh, read uh, through um, to through like paragraphs in law and uh, things like that so the digital version has to be modified in some parts and then it gets to the student and they can work with it then uh, we provide personal assistance in courses and classes. Uh, there is a system in Austria uh, that uh, persons in work can have personal, personal assistance uh, to help with uh, disability issues in their work. So Modesta is my personal assistant for work. So she uh, when when we do uh, when I do a presentation, the content comes from me and the visualization uh, is from her and she also uh, puts the presentation forward while I am talking. Um, and this um, personal assistance is also possible for students but only with, so to say, quite severe disabilities, like if you use a wheelchair, if you're blind, and it's not available, uh, for instance, for um, people with hearing impairments. So uh, we have a service of uh, assistance, which is mostly note-taking for people with hearing impairments. Um, but sometimes it's also uh, necessary when a blind student is in a, in a leg like um, digs or so that another person uh, comes with him and um, gives additional information about what is done on the screen, screen or uh, about uh, take notes and um, give the information after the lecture make research at, in the library. So there is also the possibility of um, assistance or to uh, go on an excursion, then maybe the um, wheelchair user has his personal assistant to go there, but maybe the, the blind student doesn't have it because they don't need it regularly, so they get it from us. Yeah, and then there's the big uh, topic about uh, accommodations in exams. Um, and that there's a, a lot of uh, possibilities how um, modification in exams can work, always depending on the form of the exam and on the disability. So um, the most common uh, accommodation is time extension, so the uh, students get more time for the exam. Um, and it depends on the uh, form of the exam and on the disability, like uh, a, a written exam uh, where you just uh, answer questions uh, with a, a written text. A blind person would not need more time because they work on their laptop and they can write very fast there. 
Um, but if the exam is a multiple choice or a single choice, then it's more difficult because you always have to go up and down uh, with the screen reader to the questions, then to the possible answers, then maybe back to the question uh, to uh, make sure that you uh, understand it right. So then they, of course, need more time. Um, a person with, dis with dyslexia uh, would need more time uh, for just writing and maybe to use a program for spelling um, to uh, make sure that the spelling is right. Um, but then, uh, of course, we ha also have uh, to put some exams in a digital altern altern alternative format to um, for the students, maybe to enlarge the uh, the print or to make it screen reader accessible. Some students uh, are not uh, cannot write very fast or uh, or even writing is, is a big challenge for them. So uh, we provide assistance to write down their answers. These exams are mostly done in our office. We have a, a room especially for exams with uh, several computers, uh, also with assistive technology. Um, and then the student can write their exams there because if they have more time, it would be complicated uh, doing it with the whole group. The others maybe are have to finish and after one hour and with the person has an half an hour more, then they would have to change the room or it would bring a lot of complications and um, would break their concentration. Uh, and also the teachers prefer to have it done um, in uh, in our office because they don't need to, st to stay longer. Uh, we stay longer. Uh, in, in law, you have um, exams of about four hours. And if the student has double time, then it's about eight hours. Then you need to have breaks within because nobody can concentrate for eight hours. Uh, and so it takes much more time and the teachers really prefer uh, that this will be done uh, in our office and we uh, stay there and um, yeah. And then uh, send the exam to the teachers. And uh, there, the accessibility of campus is uh, still a topic. Uh, whenever there is something new built or something renovated, next year the University of Graz starts with a really big pro uh, building pro uh, project that's the center of physics. So a big building will be brought down and a new big building will uh, uh, start. It will take until 20, 2030. It will make uh, a lot of changes during the building time. So we have to take care of that so <clears throat> that all other buildings will stay accessible. And then, of course, uh, we are involved in the planning and in the discussions about the new building. But another an um, important topic is accessible of information. So the whole digital digital part of of studies about of university, like the homepage, but also the programs and tools for exams, um, for learning. Um, in during the pandemic, a lot of um, courses were produced uh, as video. And this uh, need to have additional text for persons with hearing impairments or um, if the video shows some important pictures, there has to be additional information for the blind person to know what's going on. So these, these are also very important topics. And then we recently started a new service in our office, which is for especially for students with mental health issues, provides uh, information and support for the students, but also information and training for staff uh, to 
provide good um, inclusion for also for this this group of students and uh, our colleagues started in the middle of November and it really showed that it's uh, it's needed because he already has some clients he already made uh, makes um, some uh, information uh, appointments so it's it's really working out I guess and uh, so I will talk a little bit about the students themselves and this will show that especially um, services for persons with mental health problems are very important because there's uh, there's a survey there's a survey uh, that has been carried out every five or four years in Austria about the social situations of students in Austria and uh, there's always a section uh, about students with disabilities, chronic and uh, mental health issues. And um, so the last survey was in 2019. And here you have the numbers of uh, the percentage of all students in uh, Austria. So there is um, like 0.3% uh, of all students have uh, disabilities with their mobility, a uh, little bit more with vision uh, than with hearing. It's uh, quite similar, but if uh, but uh, almost 5% of all students have mental health problems and as well, almost 5% have um, chronic health problems. Um, and also uh, dyslexia is uh, quite a, a big part. And so in total, it's 12.2% of all students in Austria who, who um, that have some kind of disability that affects their studies. So that the question is always, does it affect the study? Um, and so that's more than 39,000 people in total and more than around 70% of those persons uh, say that they, so they always have to make a decision if they uh, communicate about their disability. And this is for many of them is quite a quite difficult because they already have experiences of discrimination and they are afraid that if they communicate their disability, especially if it's uh, a mental health problem, then uh, this would uh, bring them uh, worse chances in their studies or maybe also in their uh, scientific career. Uh, and so many students with disabilities that are not visible fight alone for a very long time and only when they think that they don't see a possibility anymore they um, they contact us and so um, at that point they ha maybe have failed an exam for two or three times or uh, have really problems with um, burnout because they uh, had to work so hard. So it would, and maybe we could have helped them before, so it would be easier. But the only way to, um, to uh, get them to contact us as early as possible is to make sure that they are welcome, that, uh, they, um, that uh, we provide services for them and to make them, to like trust in us also that we would not tell anyone else. That, that's very important, especially in this group. So um, then the figures in our office are a bit different from the students. So uh, it's only the students who contact us. Um, the percentage of students with disabilities for the University of Graz would be around thir 13. Uh, a bit higher than the Austrian average. But here we have 
not all not all of them uh, are in contact with us as i said around 100 persons per year and they're the the largest group are persons with uh, disabilities in mobility and then the next is uh, in vision those are the students who contact uh, us during their whole uh, studies because of the information about accessibility they need or about um, study material in accessible, in accessible forms that would be provided through all their studies or uh, they attend ex uh, exams with accommodations. So we are in contact during the whole time of their studies. Then uh, a much smaller group are persons with um, hearing disabilities uh, and also with uh, mental health problems. But I think that number would grow, grow now that we have uh, a special service for those. And also um, with dyslexia and chronic health, there's there are not so many, but all the, uh, but also these numbers are growing now. Then I will present present you three examples, and maybe then uh, we can start a discussion, or uh, you will um, questions about these examples. So uh, I want to introduce you, Lisa. At first, I changed the names, of course. Um, she has uh, almost completed her studies in bio biomedical engineering and she uh, suffers from severe anxiety. And so she is not able to speak in front of a group of people. So, and she's almost at the end of her uh, master program. And until now, she always found a workaround when there were presentations. She, uh, they were always with colleagues, so they uh, split it the work. She did more research, so and the the others uh, talked through, through during the presentation, so it worked out for her. But now, uh, she has to present her master thesis um, alone in front of a committee and uh, do the colloquium, ask questions about it. And now she's afraid that she can't complete her master, uh, master's program because of her anxiety and, and she wouldn't be able to speak a word in front of the committee. So we discussed with her uh, if making a video would be possible for her. So she would, uh, instead of uh, speaking in front of the committee, she would do a, a video uh, and uh, present it there. But she told us she would never get it done because she would be so anxious that it uh, it's not perfect, it's not good enough, that she would all, always start over and start over again. And the best way for her would be to do a written presentation to give it to the committee and then also to write the answers to the questions during the colloquium. Uh, so she uh, applied for this accommodation of her master's colloquium and uh, we helped her with that. And, um, made also some uh, suggestions how it could be uh, organized and the, her professor agreed and also the dean of the faculty agreed and so in she could and lisa could complete her master program and uh, yeah and this worked out quite well Another example, and it will show that things don't work out that well at any time. So uh, there's Carmen, she's an uh, Erasmus Plus uh, incoming student at the University of Graz, and she attends courses in law. And Eras Erasmus incomings very often uh, get a certificate from their home university that tells what accommodations they have there and we usually uh, do it the same way um, at our university so they can give this certificate to their teachers if they want or they can give it to us. 
um, and we communicate with the teachers about the exams uh, or other uh, accommodations they need. And in this case, uh, it was uh, uh, about extra time in exams and also the possibility for restroom breaks during an exam. And when she talked about one lecturer about that, he uh, reacted quite unfriendly and told her she's not in the position to uh, make such uh, amendments. And so she came to us and was very anxious about uh, not having the possibility to do, to, to do uh, her exams successfully. Um, and because she needs a certain point of uh, credits to take home with that uh, or otherwise uh, term here in Graz would not be accepted and maybe she would have to pay back her um, Erasmus fund. But uh, yeah, we contacted the lecturer and I informed him about the, that it would be her right like in the University Act to have these accommodations and also that this certificate is valid that she brought from her home university. So he finally accepted the accommodations uh, for the exam, but he made some very inappropriate comments about it in front of the whole groups of students. And this is a, a way of shaming that should not be tolerated. Uh, and the um, the goals, the diversity goals of the university uh, really focus also on, on, on things like that. Um, so we have a committee uh, for equal opportunities and anti-discrimination and the student would have the possibility to uh, bring this uh, this complaint to that committee and we informed her about that. But she decided to first make do the exam and then think about it, which is totally understandable because uh, she was afraid that uh, if she make uh, making the, this uh, complaint before the exam, then uh, she would fail the exam in any case because the, the lecturer would be quite angry about it. So, um, but this is, uh, th things like that, that don't happen very often, I, uh, fortunately. Uh, but still sometimes they do and then it's uh, our work to give the information to the teacher to uh, calm the student down and, uh, uh, and tell uh, her about uh, her rights and uh, her possibilities and yeah and in the end usually it works out. So then uh, I come to the third person, person um, called Peter and he studied he studies uh, in the master program of um, psych psychology. Uh, he has done also his bachelor at the University of Graz and um, he's, he's what we call our, uh, our regulars or some who uh, his literature, uh, his study material um, in accessible digital forms did a lot of exams in our office. So um, with these students, we develop more or less a friendship during the years. Um, and um, he also had note taking in uh, in this uh, statistic lectures. Um, and now he has a course in advanced test development. And in this course, they use a program for test development that is not working with his screen reader program. So one of colleagues, he specializes in digital accessibility. Uh, they met, he met with the student and they uh, tested with different screen readers, uh, with different versions of the program, if one of it would work, but it didn't. And so my colleague uh, searched if there would be another program with uh, similar functions that would work with, a, with the screen reader. And he actually found one. Um, and so 
they tested it first and then they made an appointment with the teacher of this course together and they went there with the student with his laptop and his uh, assistive technology and they showed how the screen reader didn't work with the program used in the in the course uh, and uh, how the the other program works. This is sometimes good to just um, give the the teacher to, uh, uh, really the experience what happens if a program is not accessible and if the screen reader only talks nonsense or talks nothing at all. Uh, while the students searches for a button or for uh, um, a function and then uh, to see the difference with uh, an, an accessible program and so then it uh, it was okay with the uh, teacher that the student would lose his would use his own laptop in the computer lab with his working programs and do the course with this. So this is also uh, sometimes assistive technology does not work with uh, some of the programs. We try to give get this information through in the university that before they buy a program for for an institute or for their university, they should also check if it is accessible. Uh, and this is something uh, that often doesn't get through. So it's uh, the, the Department of Digital Services that buys or supports those programs. And well, my colleague tries to uh, give them the information whenever it's possible, but it's still we have some programs that the university has bought a um, program for online exams that's called perception that's not screen reader accessible uh, so when uh, students with blindness or with visual impairments uh, do an exam have an online exam um, the questions are uh, we get the questions in a uh, in a in an extra file and yeah, transfer it into an accessible format, which of course makes also extra work for the teachers because uh, the online exam, they don't have to do much work to find out uh, if the student passed or not because the program checks it uh, itself. And in this case, they still have to check it, but it's there's, there's no other possibility. But this shows that um, accessible programs like for exams of us is not only important for the student but also uh, helpful for the teachers. At the end I want to focus on one topic. Uh, we've talked a lot about students now uh, but uh, students complete their studies and some of them like to work would like to work in science would like to work in teaching at the university so we also have to think about inclusion on so to say both sides of the seminar room in practice uh, there is there's still very few persons with disability in teaching and science in austria uh, but this is a general problem. It's there's a lot of competition about um, employment at the university, and um, if the professors or the uh, the person who decides at at the faculty or at an institute has some um, attitudes about disability that think that this uh, person can uh, is not um, as could be not as competent or could not work as much as others then they would will choose another employee uh, so there's one program now for persons who uh, do their PhD to get uh, employed for their PhD uh, persons with disability at eight universities in Austria these persons uh, do the regular work that a PhD assistant does, uh, work on their um, 
PhD and uh, but they have uh, they get one more year. Usually it's uh, for three years uh, those employments and they have more one more year because very often with a disability you need more time for things for research for also uh, sometimes with a with a chronic health problem you uh, you maybe need uh, times to more time to relax or um, you cannot attend any conference uh, because traveling could be a problem. So uh, with this, um, we hope to get more persons with disability into science and teaching at universities, but it's difficult because the, the pressure, it's especially on young scientists, is really high to throw out a paper every two months or attend uh, many conferences. Um, could be difficult in with some disabilities. It got a little bit easier concerning the conferences since many of them, even without uh, pandemic situations, are done online now. So there's not so much tra traveling anymore, but still uh, it's also a question of attitude at the university to, to see that the person with disability who has completed their studies, they have put a lot more effort and work uh, in their um, studies than the regular students. So you get a person with a very high attitude, with um, very high motivation, and maybe also with uh, different ideas about a topic from their experience of work or their experience of life. So it would really be a bonus for science. Uh, and I think the uh, main uh, uh, topic is to um, spread that attitude instead of seeing persons with disability only as a problem. So with this, I um, finish my presentation and thank you for your attention.